You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey guys, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And you're listening to episode number 388. Thank you, as always, for spending a really important few minutes of your day with us. Yes, we do appreciate your time. We do appreciate your avid listenership. And if you're a subscriber or you wrote a review, then I really, really appreciate that. And just letting you know, if you write a review, and because you like the show, and you send me a screenshot of that review that you wrote it, I've got a swag bag for you. Lots of cool stuff for your drones, accessories and whatnot. Could be drone new stuff, could be DJI stuff, it could be both. Yeah, and, and who knows what other stuff we'll get in. Maybe Unique will send us some stuff. Well, Maybe they say they're, GPC. they're going to. So. We're, keep, we, we're waiting on this stuff. Yeah, in fact, I need to hit up Trent one more time and just yeah. be like, we need make it stuff. happen or just stop telling me. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway. Yep, and by the way, keep in mind, contest is still ongoing. If we play your question on the air, on the podcast, then you'll be entered into a drawing for a free full year membership into drone you about a five six hundred dollar value we give them away for every 50 questions get those questions in definitely guys get those questions in we appreciate it and thanks to our sponsor charky uh if you haven't had lamb jerky before when you go out on these long trips you're out in the middle of nowhere you're filming a production they are very useful very delicious protein packed no preservatives gluten-free it's gonna make you feel good you're not gonna gain a bunch of weight and look like you work on the oil fields but <laughs> it will really like beer fill you up you know what i went down to artesia in the oil fields and i had mm-hmm. one of the most disgusting hamburgers i've ever had oh that's a bummer well like i'm sure to one of those guys it was great because they like deep fried the green chili and deep fried the burger and then like had they this deep fried the burger yeah it was gross oh my word it was so gross i was like you know what i'm i'm not ordering another hamburger well, until you know i what? see in and out to each their own that's true Let's get into today's question, brought to you by Charky. Hey guys, this is Jim in Orange, California. I've been flying a couple of years and recently joined the Drone U, and I've already found some of your information to be very helpful. Now to my question, and it relates to batteries. I do quite a bit of flying over the ocean in Southern California, and I'm concerned that my batteries may be getting old, and is there a possibility they will flatten out quickly and maybe not give me enough power to get home? Paul, I know you talk about looking at the voltage versus the percent of battery left when flying. However, I'm wondering if there are a number of cycles as well that you should, at which point you should be thinking about changing your batteries. Thanks guys for all the great information. Very, very, very good questions. Yeah, good question. And I must admit we have some envy flying in Orange, I mean, in California. Definitely. Over the ocean, often. Definitely. There are a few ways that you can actually tell kind of the life cycle of your batteries. Uh, If you pull up in the app uh, and you pull up the the battery information, you can see how many cycles are on that battery. Phantom 2, after about 50 cycles, the batteries were donezo. Um, After about 60 to 80 cycles on a Phantom 3, same thing. I haven't reached that point with a Phantom 4. I'm at 50 cycles with the Phantom 4 battery right now, and it is still pushing 4.29, 4.28 volts on startup. So a great way to tell how healthy the battery is is how much voltage are you pushing unloaded so the motors are not on. Okay. Uh, You just turn the drone on, you just put the battery in, it says 100%, and then it says a voltage next to it. Good batteries are always going to give you 4.29, 4.28, 4.30 on startup. If your batteries are starting to go, you'll notice it'll say 4.19, 4.21, 4.22, 4.17. That's when your batteries are starting to show age. Another way you can tell the age is if your batteries start to puff out. So this battery is puffy, uh, feels uh, kind of feels like a push-up bra on the outside. You know, just like that thin <laughs> little layer where you can... Oh, I, I know what you're talking about, Paul. You do. Thank you very much. 
<laughs> Good. I'm glad you know what I'm talking about. I was worried there for a second. Uh, Anywho. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is another way that you can tell your batteries are about to go is they are fluffy like a push-up bra on yeah. the sides. Hmm, I'm sure now you won't of... forget that, though, nope, will you? you're right. So... <laughs> I will not forget, and I'm not going to mess with that. Um, as far as Inspire 1 batteries go, your TB48s, for whatever reason, and I do not know the answer to why, um, they last longer than the 47s. I've had th- three 47s batteries go out on me. Uh, I finally gave one of the batteries to Jason so that he could use it for his Osmo because mm-hmm. it was a cell voltage warning. So the battery will still charge and discharge, but it can't actually hold the load or the amperage from the drone. So, right. But it can hold the amperage from the Osmo because it's a lot less amps. It's sure. like five amps instead of 30. Which you know? is a great way to use an old battery. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so to answer his question, 50 to 100 cycles, you're getting in that old age range, but you can really tell on startup voltage. You can really tell if the batteries are puffed up. TB48s last longer than TB47s. Um, and also, you should be amortizing. Let's talk business for a second. Okay. You should be amortizing the cost of your batteries in every job because if you have a job where you're cycling through batteries all day long, mm-hmm. you're actually you know, inhibiting the life cycle of those batteries. Well, it's part of the cost of your job, and you need to account for that. Absolutely. So on an average year, last year, I blew through, meaning I used and completed, finished, they don't work anymore, three Inspire One batteries. So this year, how many batteries? And that was only from September to December. Mm -hmm. If I can say, all right, I'm probably going to have to buy six Inspire One batteries this year. That's going to be 160 times six. Mm -hmm. And then do I price that into every job? Meaning if I take the total amount of that or just round it to 150 and I get six. Um, If I say, all right, it's going to cost me about a thousand a year. Should I be building in a hundred bucks each month into a savings account? Should I bid it into the job? I mean, what what are the best ways that we can really do this, Rob? Because this goes beyond the spreadsheet. This goes beyond the QuickBooks Pro. You know, this is actually trying to come up for uh, cost to replace your battery, but you should also be doing this with your drone as well. Uh, well, there are a lot of things that you should be doing this uh, this with. I mean, even all the way down to SD cards, if we really want to get into the minutia, because we go through those things quite a bit around here, it oh, amazes yeah. me yes. how much we spend on SD cards, <laughs> of all things. But anyways, yeah, you should absolutely be accounting for that. In the accounting world, what we refer to that is, is managerial accounting, which is figuring out the actual true cost of any particular engagement that you participate in. So... Yeah, you need to account for that. And there are various ways to do it. Probably not the time to go into it on a podcast, but figuring out how many batteries you're going to need, how many jobs you expect to do, how many hours you expect to work, and then allocating. Literally, you could do it by hour. You could do it by job. And I don't know that you necessarily need to set aside the money for it, but it needs to be included in the in your profitability, so to speak, for a given job. It's just like if you go to a restaurant, they sell you a burger, a good restaurant, a good business person is going to know what it costs to make that burger relative to what it costs or what they're able to sell it to you for. Yeah. It's no different from that concept, what you're doing. It's just, and, and there are restaurant people that don't do that and they probably should. They probably get to the end of the year and think, what the heck did I just do with all my money? Where did it go? Yeah. Well, it went into the lettuce that they bought or it went into the cheese that they bought. This is the same thing. And one of the things we've got to do here at Drone You, and Paul bugs me, this is my bad is come up with a tool that is useful for you guys to do this kind of thing. And tool being some sort of a spreadsheet or a software. Yeah. It's in the plans. It totally is. Speaking of tools and toys, this is really random. Someone on Facebook, this lady got in a political argument with me and she's oh, like, don't do that. she was like, you use toys and call yourself a pilot. And I just thought it was funny. And I was like, well, actually <laughs> pilots make really good money doing this. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, just random thought there. Um, yes. Having those spreadsheets would definitely help us out, Rob, and uh, that is uh, definitely helpful. And I hoped the answer to this question was helpful to you. What can I do with my old batteries? How long should they last? How should I be uh, factoring into this my, into my business model? This was a great question, and I hope we get more business-related questions, more questions like these. Yeah, it was a good question. I do. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit because we're, of course, focusing on DJI. What about other manufacturers? Do you think the cycle numbers that you're throwing out would still apply? 
You know, really, I don't have enough experience, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's um, fair. I, I really don't. The solo batteries have been pretty reliable. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say the solos are, are good. The Typhoon um, Q500, those batteries suck. Though, I mean, like, you're going to be cycling through batteries much faster than DJI. The new Typhoon H batteries, though, I have zero experience with. So I honestly just don't know. Right. And I'm not going to comment on it because that's fair. Unique makes some really cool stuff. Yeah, so. absolutely. All right. Well, anyways, hope that helps, Jim. Watch those cycles once you're getting around 50. He didn't say what kind of drone he's flying, but we presume it's a P4 or Spy or something like that, yeah. maybe a P3, which they're all going to be relatively similar. Totally true. Cool. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Guys, if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com, upload that question. Why? Well, you've got a chance to get some free gear. You've also got a chance to get a free membership from DroneU. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask DroneU. <laughs>